Hello everyone and welcome to Nervous Nessy. I announced that my next big trip is going to Fairbanks, Alaska in the middle of the winter. Yes, I know I'm crazy. But I had to buy a lot of extreme winter wear in order to not freeze to death on this trip. And it's expensive, like really expensive to buy all of these items. And I wanted to shoot a video for you guys that kind of covers how to save money to where you are not spending this, but you're instead spending this. So stay tuned. One thing that really matters when it comes to buying winter wear for very, very cold situations is the material. And what I mean by that is whatever the garment is made out of. You want to steer as far and clear from cotton as possible. Do not buy cotton. Even when you go to purchase things, don't even look at your labels. Don't even get anything that has cotton in it, even if it's a percentage. Do your very best to not buy cotton. The reason why is cotton does not retain warmth. You want synthetic materials, uh, things like polyester, rayon, that kind of thing, because those will actually, actually retain heat. Now, obviously, if you were going somewhere in the middle of the summer and it's very hot, you would want light, airy cotton and not synthetic materials. But for the more extreme cold weather, you want to think about things like fleece, wool, and down, buying clothes that have those kind of fabrics. And a lot of times when you think of wool, you think, itchy, I'm going to itch to death. But the way that a lot of the winter clothes are made of wool, not only are they not itchy, they're way more comfortable than cotton. I mean, they're really, really comfortable. And not all fleece is made the same. So if you go into a store and you see a sign and it says fleece jogger, don't just grab that. Look at your labels because in order to get the price down, they will take a percentage of the material is polyester, but the other percentage is cotton. We're talking 40% polyester, 60% cotton. That's not going to do you any good. I don't know how many stores I went into and the salespeople were looking at me like, why is this woman just going around looking at labels? <laughs> and that's why. Fleece is expensive. If you've ever bought just regular material of fleece, maybe for a sewing project, it's expensive. We're talking on sale for one yard can be easy, $5. Normally it's about $12 to $13 for one yard of material. Can't even hardly make pants out of that. Um, so make sure you look at your labels and try and get 100% fleece or as close to 100% fleece polyester, should I say, as possible. Now, one very quick way to tell whether it is true polyester fleece or a blend is the texture. The 100% polyester fleece is going to be more textured. It's going to look like it kind of 
wants to peel a little bit and, you know, make little fuzzies on it, that is what you want. If it is very smooth and, and you know, feels really nice on your skin, it's probably going to have cotton in it. So really watch your labels and make sure that you are purchasing something that's actually going to work. Because the last thing you want to do is to buy something that has a lot of cotton and you've spent a lot of money on it and then you freeze to death. That's not good. Now, there are tons and tons of different stores out there where you can buy the more extreme winter clothes and there's even infinitely more brands. Everyone is different. Everyone has different budgets. Some people may like one brand. Some people may hate it. Some people may love one store. Some people may hate it. You do you. Find what works for you. I went to the stores that were near me that I had available. Um, I went to REI. REI always has a lot of winter wear. I went to Bass Pro Shop. I went to um, Sports Basement. Uh, one just recently opened up near me and I went there. And then I also went online. Uh, there's a lot of great stores online. Um, check out Sierra.com, Backcountry.com. Uh, what's some of the other ones I went to? Yeah, um, Moose Jaw, MooseJaw.com. And I'll put all of this information in the description below for you. Uh, but those were kind of the stores I primarily stuck with. Um, they have great selections. And then some of the brands that I purchased, um, things like uh, Smart Wool. I bought a lot of Smart Wool. If you're wanting the most comfortable clothes, <laughs> Smart Wool. They make everything. They even make shorts and bathing suits out of wool. I mean, you think, okay, I'm wearing a wool bathing suit. Smart wool is great. Um, what else? Uh, Hot Chilies is really great for base layers, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, just different brands. Patagonia. Uh, I believe my coat is Patagonia. Um, I think Sorel is my boots. Um, I will make a separate video where I actually show you what all I bought and kind of give you prices and stuff on everything. But um, try different brands. Try what works, what doesn't. There was some that worked great. Perfect. And I didn't purchase it because I couldn't find it on sale. <laughs> And so that's why I want to make this video is I want to give you some tips and tricks on how to get the cheapest prices. So tip number one, try then buy. What I mean by that is go to your local store, wherever you can purchase your winter wear, try it on, find your size, have your brand, for example, I'm going to say smart wool. I want to buy a smart wool pair of pants. I go into a store, I try it on, and then I try to find the best deal. It might be in that store. It might be in another store. It might be online. But I have my size to where I'm not wasting time and energy purchasing and then having it shipped to me or having to wait and return it at the store. I try it, find my size, then I buy it. As far as the buying online, you're going to have to become a stalker. I have never stalked anything in my life <laughs> like I stalked the sales. So I found whatever the item was, tried it on, got my size, 
got all the information, and then I would go online and put in the information, and it pulls up all these different websites and different stores. And I would sit every other day, just a quick check, where can I find this cheaper? Oh, here it is at 40% off. I wanna get it at least below 50% off. Keep checking, keep checking. Oh, here's a holiday that comes around. Let me see if they have special deals. Oh, this is last season, which another tip is buy the previous season stuff because it's cheaper. But I would buy the previous season stuff and 60% off, 70% off. I was finding great deals just by going online and stalking the stores and the websites. Um, now, I know a lot of you think, well, that's kind of unfair. You go to one store and then you purchase it elsewhere. It, it's not because I did purchase things at the stores I went to. So I may not have purchased that particular item, but while I was in the store, I did purchase other things. So the stores are getting my money. They may not be getting all of my money, but they are getting my money. Another tip for you is when you go online or when you go into the stores, sign up. I know it's kind of annoying. You're gonna have to put your email address in, but put your email address in, that way you can get discounts. And a lot of times the online retailers will have 20% off, you know, 15% off the first item, you know, that you buy or off your first order. So if you can buy multiple things at once, you can add that discount on top of that. Now, of course, you want to read the fine print and see, is it off a regular priced item or is it off of sale and clearance items as well? But that is a good way to get a lot of discounts. Um, and some stores, for example, REI, if you sign up to become a member, you actually get dividends back at the end of the year. So um, yeah, sign up for the different programs and use those discounts. Like I said, these are expensive items you're purchasing. Take advantage of those discounts. Now, another tip for you is think outside the box. And yes, you have your various sporting stores that are gonna have your extreme winter clothes. Maybe you have your regular stores that have clothes, the mall, that sort of thing. But think outside the box of where you can possibly purchase extreme winter clothes at a cheaper price. And I love supporting various things. I love giving back. I love trying to repurpose things. And so go to your local Goodwill or Salvation Army or something like that. Sift through what they have. I found clothes at Goodwill that were full fleece and got it for just a few dollars versus going to a store and paying $60 for pretty much the exact same thing. Another option is go to your local military surplus store. And this goes for women too. Um, even though we kind of tend to think, okay, men go to the military surplus stores, women go there as well because it's kind of, for a lot of the undergarments and stuff, they kind of can be unisex. I found some kind of mid-layer pants that were for men, but they fit me perfectly fine, and they're ridiculously warm. Um, in fact, when I was in the store trying them on, I was sweating. So that's a good tip is if you put it on and you're sweating, thumbs up. That's a, that's a great item to purchase. Um, also go to places like Costco or Sam's Club. Sometimes they have various things. The only thing kind of to watch out for is 
look at your labels because yes, it does say fleece on the sign, but it's not 100% polyester. So keep an eye out for that. The next tip is kind of in line with, you know, women going to the military surplus store. Don't stick with your gender. It is perfectly okay for a woman to buy men's clothes and men to buy women's clothes. If it fits and it's the material you need, purchase it. Um, a lot of stores really drop the prices on women's clothes to try and turn it over because women are more fashion conscious than men, so they want that turnover of all of their merchandise. You, it, I know we're kind of thinking in our heads, okay, I don't want to be a guy buying pink pants. You don't have to. You can stick with black or gray or navy, that sort of thing. But depending on your body type, if you can fit in the clothes and it's on sale, purchase it. it you can save a ton of money by doing that. A final tip for you is to buy used. Now, yes, you can go to your local Goodwill Salvation Army and purchase there, but what I'm referring to is previously used items from major retailers. A lot of the outdoor companies, such as REI, they have a buyback program where if you purchase something and you use it once or twice, you can actually sell it back to them at a discount. So let's say you purchase a coat and you go on a trip and this coat costs you $100 and you know you're never going to wear this coat again. You can sell it back to them for, let's say, $50. You basically spent $50 to be able to use that coat one time and you get the other $50 back they hold on to that coat and turn around and sell it to someone else. I purchased my parka, which I will show you in the clothing video. I purchased my parka through REI and the parka normally runs for $300 and some change. I pur purchased it for $200 dollars and some change. And when I received it, the only thing that was wrong with that coat was a little snap down at the bottom of the coat had come off. I went to my local craft store, bought a new snap, put it on, and it's like brand new. And I saved $100. So think about purchasing previously used items a lot of the different companies that do that buyback program also have kind of a disclaimer that if you purchase any of these previously used items, you receive it and you don't like it, maybe it's a little too used for your, your taste, you can send it back and go, no thanks, I changed my mind. But you're saving money and you're technically saving the environment by not purchasing another thing brand new. You're purchasing something that was already used. So try to use that tip as much as you can because you will save a lot and you'll save the environment. In this video, I wanted to give all of you as many tips as I could about how to save money. And I'm sure you're probably thinking, well, how much did she really save? I have my computer open here. I will give you the exact numbers. So I bought everything that I need for this trip and I ended up spending $1,305.45. That is a lot of money for one trip. However, I'm thinking, because I travel a lot, I'll use this stuff again. If you're only going to use it that one time, unless you're just really abusive with your items, 
you're going to take care of it and be able to use it in the future. So that big coat that you purchase for the trip, if you don't wear it again until your next time of going to somewhere cold, then unless you have drastically fluctuated in your build, your weight, then you can keep that coat for many years. And that's the way that I look at it is it's kind of like an investment. I will purchase this and be able to use it for 10, 20 years if need be. So $1,300 is a lot. However, I have the exact number of how much I saved. So I spent $1,305.45. I saved $872.78. So everything total was fairly close. Uh, it was probably about, what, 35, 40% off of everything. There were some things that I did purchase full price that the purchase price in and of itself was cheap enough that there was no discount. But the extremely expensive things, those, I got the biggest discount. Um, the boots, the mittens, and the coat. Those are the three most expensive things that I needed to purchase. And I got all three of those at a very big discount. So I'm going to look here and see specifically, give you guys a an idea so my mittens, I got those, I got a coupon that I could use for those, and they were on sale. I ended up saving $30 on that. It was $89 for the mittens, and I ended up saving $30. Um, the boots, I ended up with... Uh, it was on sale and I had some gift cards that I had accumulated. So I spent $53, but I saved 116 And then let me see here. My, I'll give you the exact number. My parka, it was regular price dollars and I spent $199, so I saved $130. And that's just because I shopped around. I shopped around to try and find the best deals on these items, and it paid off because I saved close to $1,000 overall, but I did buy a lot of stuff. Let me see here. I purchased 33 clothing items. 33. That's pants, tops, gloves, mittens, more pants, more tops because you have multiple layers, um, coat, beanies, gaiters. I bought a lot. 33 items for $1,300. Not too bad, but I could have been spending well over 2000 I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about any of the brands, the stores, any of the programs they have, how to save, feel free to leave those questions below and I will try to get to them as soon as I can. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave those below. I know that it's a lot, but you can save a lot of money out there. And I hope to see everyone in the next video where I actually show you everything that I bought. But until then, bye!